Apparently I wasn't the only one who saw the new space launch, so today I'm making a SpaceX helmet. There's a Falcon 9 helmet. I should probably figure that out before I start recording, right? This build was brought to you by my patrons, without whom this channel would not exist, let alone the build. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a visor. I'll be doing this by slightly increasing the height of the vacuum forming buck that I built in my Daft Punk helmet build. Part of the inspiration for this build was that I noticed that the general visor shapes were the same. So clearly we can infer what music Elon likes. Oh, and movies. Wouldn't it be great if Alien was scored to Daft Punk? Wait a minute. <laughs> the chestburster scene to defunk doesn't match up at all, and it's great. The one issue with my previous visor is that you need a little bit extra material for the helmet wall to attach to. And with vacuum forming, you're gonna lose a bit of material to a slope anyway. So I increased the height by exactly one puzzle piece strip, that's my unit of measurement, and filled in the seams with quick seal. That white patch there as I bulked up that one side because there was a little bit of a dip in it. When it dried, I sanded it. Then I filled in the base with random scrap pieces to prevent it from collapsing under the pressure of the plastic. Speaking of which, I cut up a sheet of 0.08 inch thick plastic to fit my vacuum form frame. Then I carefully attached it to the frame by first drilling pilot holes and then inserting screws. You don't need to press hard like if you're gonna permanently attach something. You just need to go deep enough to hold the piece of plastic in place. It occurs to me that I'm eventually going to wear out this frame by drilling into it and I'm gonna have to build a new one. But I found that when vacuum forming, especially with a homemade platform, it helps to have a frame that's much larger than the platform is anyway. Next, I place the frame in an oven at 350 degrees for five minutes or until the center starts to droop. Then I turned on the shop vac and pressed it onto the buck. I waited for it to conform, then turned off the vacuum and waited for it to cool because it's still just a little too hot to touch. Also, you don't want to mess with it when it's still malleable, you know? I had more trouble getting the buck out of this one than I did with the last one, and I think that's because the increased buck height equals increased pressure, which glued the buck to the plastic dome. I got it out, but it took a bit. It's kind of like if you press gum onto a surface, it's gonna stick a little bit. I unscrewed the visor from the frame. Be sure to store those screws in a convenient receptacle, like a coconut shell. Next, I trimmed off 90% of the plastic with tin snips. Oh, hey, real quick, that slope is total validation for increasing the buck height. It's much better that it's there where I can just cut it off than up where it's gonna interfere with the slope of the visor. When I got the majority of the excess trimmed away, I wrapped the edge in tape and sanded away the slope. Actually, the tape isn't necessary. I don't know what I was thinking because, well, I was thinking I gotta do this exactly the same as the last visor, but the reality is this part isn't gonna be seen, so it doesn't matter whether it's scuffed up or not. If you want the visor to be dark black like the show version, then see the Daft Punk video for the dyeing process. But that's not how they look during the launch. I think that was kind of just a, a PR thing. So it's not what I'm doing. Actually, it wouldn't be great as if it was like the uh, 2001 space helmets where they're transitions. Now for the rim. To disguise the visor edge, it has to look a little bit like this. And just because I'm not the most talented sketch artist, what that's supposed to be is four strips of foam creating walls holding in the visor. I started with the inner one at a white EVA craft foam from Michaels. Next, white EVA roll foam from Michaels just a slightly less dense version of the craft foam, also in roll form. And the, the rest of it is Michael's foam. You know what, Michael's, can we get a sponsorship going? The amount of people that I'm gonna send your way is gonna save you from the recession. Then I glued these pieces together with contact cement. If I was going fast right there, just pause the video when the pieces are on the cutting mat. You can get all the dimensions that way. Make sure you wear a respirator while you're doing this. These, uh, these fumes, they're not good to breathe. <laughs> this basic frame forms what is essentially an outer helmet while it airs out, I'm going to build the inner helmet. That's the thing, this this is actually kind of two helmets, it's two builds in one. I cut that from craft foam and templates pulled off of a dummy head. I heat formed and glued them together. While that dries, I test fitted the visor. It fits, but the top is supposed to be wider, so I traced a rough stencil and completely guessed at the shape, if I'm being totally honest, just free-handed it. I can't afford those tiny little Stargate stencils that Adam Savage uses. Yeah, no, I, I don't have the budget for those. I just gotta freehand things. Trace that on foam cut it out, made these extra details, I think they're actually grip pieces. Before gluing it in, I noticed the rear of the visor extended beyond the edge of the outer dome. So I traced where I need to cut. Best trace ever. Then I cut that out with a rotary tool and a disc bit, and I reset the visor, putting some tape on it just to protect it from the glue, glued in the top of the rim, and now that it's in there, I super glued the back piece onto the visor. Normally you wouldn't want to do this because the sort of cloudy residue will pollute the trans transparent plastic, but these triangular windows, unlike the alien helmet, are going to be totally 
painted over later, so it's a moot point here. Those edges are supposed to be rounded, not 90 degree angles, so I'm gonna fill those in with Alex Dry, which supposedly dries in 20 minutes, as opposed to Quick Seal's eight to 24 hours, which I only just now found out about from Odin. Wow, that's, if you're not familiar with the YouTube prop makers, that, that probably sounds pretty weird. Yes, yeah, so I just sacrificed a goat over a copper bowl, and Odin bestowed upon me a fast drying sealant. You can just go to Lowe's. I didn't like the way the top rim was meshing with the dome, so I added a foam spacer. Now I'm gonna set that aside and get back to the inner helmet, which should be aired out by now. These seams are just god awful, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm actually gonna pre-sand these before I fill them. Sanded the seams, made sure it fit inside the visor, then extrapolated the chin strap from my Expanse helmet template, which is like not even remotely close to being accurate, as you can see. But it's kind of the same concept. I mean, like, the Expanse helmets are literally 70s fighter pilot helmets that are designed to be functional. And I feel like Elon's people took that design and just made it sleek. There's an outer piece of the rim that the visor rests on like a shelf, which is what I'm working on right now, but you can just ignore this part because it didn't look quite right to me, so I fix it later in the video. At this point in the build, I covered up the visor and masking tape to protect you it. You guys can save on tape by just doing the edges and using like newspaper in the middle or something. Then I cut up scrap foam and used it to fill out the back rim of the visor. I also filled in some of the seams with Alex Dry, which does in fact dry a lot faster than Quick Seal. So in the same day, I was able to paint those back windows white. You know, originally I thought this was a waste, but then I realized with the inner helmet, you couldn't see out of those windows anyway. So it's like they would have had to put windows on both the outer helmet and the inner helmet, and that just creates another seal. When that dried, I ripped up the tape and aligned the two helmets. Satisfied with the alignment, I put in magnets to hold it in place and Chicago screws for the hinge effect. Okay, the hinge works, but this is where I noticed that I, I really didn't like the way that chin strap rim looks. So I ripped it up, sanded away the bits of foam that were still stuck on there, and replaced it with a half foam dowel from Michaels. Come on, Michaels with that sponsor. They're not gonna sponsor so Patreon. Then cut that in half again to make a quarter dowel, sanded the ends, and attached it. When it aired out, I sanded the ripped up edge with my rotary tool, and finished up the neck part with fabric from a gray hypnotoad shirt. I cut a gorget and put in two, I think it's technically two please. But it looks like four. I, I don't know, I'm not a tailor. Folds. Made like two folds, it reads as four seams. By the way, maybe make it half this length. <laughs> I glued it in there, and that's it. One SpaceX launch helmet. Thanks for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video then you can check out my previous builds once again i'd like to thank my patrons who made this video possible seriously i, I was using two liter soda bottles as helmet visors as recently as last year and because of my patrons discovering vacuum forming has opened up a whole new range of infinite helmets i can make now if you're interested in purchasing my visors they'll be available in my etsy store link below and in the video description if they're currently sold out just check back in a few days what's your favorite space helmet let me know in comments below see you later see there's tape in here and it's just it is only stuck to my hair